Can you hear me, Len? Yeah, I can hear you because of the voice. That, but yeah. you're not in. I'm Julio Zamora, and on today's episode, we're going to talk about bulbs and even direct sowing perennial seeds. Have you ever wondered about why leaves change color? Listen in and you'll know. Then we're going to talk to you about perennials and getting them to bed for the winter. We're also going to discuss your roses and their care at this time of year. And last, we're going to talk about something you can do right now to get a clean start next spring by using dormant oil sprays. So stay tuned, and we'll be back after this short break. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Bloomers Holiday Preview Party. Save the date, Friday, November 16th. Join us at Bloomers Home and Garden Center for Bloomers Holiday Preview Party. It's the biggest event of the year. You'll have a memorable experience enjoying the festive atmosphere, tasting wine, being entertained by the strolling barbershop quartet, and soaking in all the season has to offer. November 16th, everyone is invited. All the fans of Bloomers in the Garden, all the customers, family and friends of Bloomers Home and Garden Center, celebrate with us and experience the holiday season and the unveiling of Bloomers Christmas Collection. During this event, everything Christmas is on sale. Save 50% off any one item and get 20% off everything else. It's an incredible opportunity to build your own holiday collection or shop for unique gifts for family and friends. Don't miss it. Join us Friday, November 16th at Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County, New Jersey for Bloomers Holiday Preview Party. Friday, November 16th. For more information about Bloomers Holiday Preview Party, visit bloomers.com. That's bloomers.com. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Well, then, we're excited about the fall bulbs, aren't we? Yes, we are. Yes, Yes, we are. I've got a story. Oh, okay, great. Once upon a time, there was a pretty girl named Tulip. (laughs) One day, the god of autumn, Waltzum, fell in love with her, and he kept approaching her, but she does not accept him. And after a while, he finds her picking flowers and approaches her again. She is tired of him, asks the god of Virginia, Artemis, to change her into a tulip. Ooh. Ooh. My goodness. It's amazing how many stories there are in Greek mythology about tulips. Wow. And also... Christianity, Christianity, same thing. Yes. Yeah, the Roman uh, reform. Yeah, sure, uh, Reformation. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Well, tulips are the first thing we're going to talk about. Right. Uh, one thing, uh, if you plant them in full sun, they'll do great. Do great. But yes. you also, if you put them in a little bit of shade, right, that they'll last a little bit longer because it's often the sun that does them in. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So, one thing is a tulip. You put it in twice the depth. Right. And then you can space them out anywhere from two to three times the width. Okay. Now, Pretty good. we're going to talk about daffodils next. Ooh, yes. To me, that means spring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. And I have a little uh, story for you, too, Len. Uh, there are several versions of this, but we're going to do this. Uh, uh, this is the Greek mythology one. Narcissus was a young man of unparalleled beauty who was so entranced by his own reflection that in, he was at a pond and he wasted away just gazing at himself lovingly and on his own form. So he just kept looking at himself. That's right. And what happened was he died and then his friends saw that there was a flower where he laid and it was a daffodil. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Oh, boy, I'll tell you what. Well, Narcissus are all types of daffodils, That's paper right. whites in, in that family. Yeah, that there's quite family. a few of those, don't they? Yeah. And that did you know that they are also mole, vole, and deer resistant? Wow. 
that's even better because you know we have little critters uh, and big critters. In our, uh, yes, big critters too. Yeah, deer are a big problem, but right. they don't bother the daffodils. No, that's that's so. It's really a, a great great uh, bulb to have around because you have no problems with the little critters. That's mm-hmm. one less thing you have to worry about. Yeah, right? yeah, and that they're easy to grow. Easy, easy to, to grow. grow. Yes. Um, same rule of thumb. Mm-hmm. Twice the the width, twice the depth of the bulb. Um, you can even go a little as much as three times the width of the bulb. Wow! And anytime you're you're using or buying bulbs, rather you want to buy top size. Don't waste your time buying a cheap bag of bulbs. No, you don't want to do that. You you definitely get what you pay for. That's correct. And did you know the daffodil is March's birth flower? Oh no, I didn't know that. It is. Wow! It is. And then also, okay, the narcissus. Why do we keep doing paper whites at Christmas? I never quite understood that. Yeah, Real I, fragrant in the house. Really yeah. good. It is December's birth flower. Oh, wow. There you go. I like that. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Very nice. Well, next we're going to talk about Crocus. Crocus. Yep. Crocus was a mortal man in Greek mythology. <laughs> According to one myth, he was unhappy with his affair with Simlax. The gods felt pity for him and turned him into the plant of the same name. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. Well, these people are turning into plants, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Crocus is... Our wow. bright, happy, cheery flower, yes, one of the are. first to bloom in the, in the spring. Mm-hmm. And you can plant them, same type of rule of thumb, but right. you can also scatter them in naturalizing. But we're going to discuss that after we're done with the, the income. The, the basic, at the end of the segment, right. they can be planted basically all the same way, whether they're a tulip or whether they're a daffodil. And we'll discuss that at the end of the segment. That's right. One of my favorites right here is snowdrops. Oh, boy. Symbolizing behind the snowdrop is the, is the legend about the Garden of Eden. The snowdrop flower was linked to Eve and, and her tears. How about that? <laughs> After God banished her and Adam from the Garden of Eden, she was crying from despair. And to comfort her, an angel picked up a snowflake. How about that? And shattered it across earth to make Eve feel better. After this story, the snowdrop flower became a symbol of hope and rejuvenation. How about that, huh, Land? Yeah, That's I love cool. that story. <laughs> yeah, I love, st- I love that story. You know, there, there's another, there's a German story about okay. snowdrops. Wow. They said, that after God created snow to gather mm-hmm. the flowers' colors each year, all flowers refused to give God their colors. Wow. When the snow came to the gentle snowdrop, it decided to make an offer. Snowdrop will blossom first every spring to announce its arrival, but in exchange for that, it will give its color to God. And the snowdrop flower accepted it. And ever since, snowdrops are the first flower to bloom. Wow, how about that? Very cool. Yeah, isn't it amazing what all these uh, well symbolisms and myths and how they work? Bulbs have such a long history. They do. Long history. So oh, many yeah. years they... they I mean, obviously in mythology, but also just in the in our own history. Right. And I mean, I'm I'm Dutch right. and German. You know, right. It was traded with tulips. It literally is like the stock market where it had gone <laughs> crazy at one point. So it, it's an amazing thing. It, it's not all about Holland either. There's other areas that. Oh yeah. Right? Oh yeah. But it seems like Holland somehow it congregated in, in that because okay. of. Whether it's climate or whether it's soil, right. it, that's where they seem to all come from. A lot of bulbs are grown in Michigan, too. No kidding. Wow, that's good to know. Yeah. Even in our own country. Yeah, wow. that's right. Amazing. That's right. Now, spacing. We talked about spacing. Right, we did. A rule of thumb for all bulbs is going to a depth two to three times the height of the, ball, the, the bulb, and spacing is going to be three to four times the width. Okay, that's good to know. Now, do you understand what naturalizing is, Will? Naturalizing is when you're just throwing them randomly. Is that correct? That's right. I think that's how it works. That's naturalizing. right. You kind of just scatter them and plant them where they fall. Right. Like you can plant crocus in the middle of your lawn mm-hmm. because they come up and they bloom before your lawn gets cut. <laughs> that's so nice. you get the flower, it comes up, oh. so you get to see it. You know, some people say it looks weedy, but some people said, wow, it, wow. It's, it looks great. Mm-hmm. If you plant it there... It's supposed to be there, right? And the de- right definition of a weed is a plant in the wrong spot. <laughs> if you didn't put it there, it's in the wrong spot. But being you put it there, it belongs it is, it there. Is there. So. That's wonderful. And again, like the snowdrop announces spring. It does. It's wonderful. 
you can use different ways to, to plant. plant those, Bowl yeah. planters, for instance, they often um, are used. I, give me a good good spade. Right. I like to plant in big areas, and I like to dig out the whole area the whole so area. it's one level, so there's not different levels mm -hmm. of depth. Plant, put the bulbs in, and then right. cover it with the next section. Don't cover it with the section that you dug out. Save that to the very last section you do. That's a lot easier, isn't it? Yep. Than digging one at a time and doing that, doing it that way. That's right. That's right. And then what happens is you go and you go take that soil, and then you can put bone meal before you cover them up. But anything that is an inorganic, like say for instance, um, bulb tone, right. a lot of organics in it. Right. But I, I would rather have that go on top of the soil, top where bone meal as all organic mm -hmm. to go in. Uh, after, you know, when it, when it's planted, that's fine. Right. That's fine. Right. That's a lot better. Yep. Slow release. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now there's also a lot of concern with, all right, what do I do when the, they're done flowering? I mean, people screw Finish. up their bulbs every year because mm -hmm. they, right. the flower fades and they cut them in half and they yeah. cut them all off down to the ground. They can't do that. What happens then? You that, don't, you don't get, you don't get the flowers back. That's right. Right. You For have instance, to wait. And tulips, mm -hmm. you can deadhead the flower, Psh, but leave off. the stem and leaves until they turn yellow. Right, right. You know, you need to think of it this way. All that energy that's stored in that bulb, mm -hmm. it shoots everything up, the flower, the leaves, and everything. It looks right. gorgeous. Oh, yeah. you got to kind of wait for it to funnel back down into that bulb, get that energy back in the bulb to where the flowers die out, Right. And you need to then take it off. If you do it too early, a lot of times the bulbs will divide and there'll be leaves next year. Mm -hmm. This way you're ensuring you'll right. have a better uh, crop of flowers. Now, tulips, you're going to get every two years for tulips. Two years. Yeah. And then you, you should probably pull them out. Pull them out, yes. Yeah. It, takes it takes time, doesn't it, Len, for that energy to go back down. It does. It, it, and you know, and it's sometimes, it, like, for instance, if you do late tulips, right. you're going to be knocking on the door of when you could plant okay. your annuals. Right. And they may look ugly. Right. You know, daffodils, right. the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, you want the foliage to turn yellow. Mm -hmm. And that what some people do is they'll take a rubber band and they'll fold those leaves down so you can't, can't see, see them. It. Oh, and they put a rubber band on it right. so it kind of hides it. Kind of hides it, yes. Mm -hmm. That's a good way. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And keep in mind when you go to plant after that, um, you want to make that. sure that you're not hitting mm -hmm. those bulbs That's with right. your shovel or spade because you're. You know, then all of a sudden you introduce them to start to rot, rot. over the oh. over the summer. That's not good. No, no, nope. not good at all. Yeah, so be careful where you're putting uh, your other plants around them. Yeah. If not, you're gonna have problems. Just keep in mind, going probably deep enough. If you're, you have most of your bulbs are gonna be about six inches under the soil, maybe even a little more, depending on what they are. Except for crocus. A little higher. Um, right. About and three grape inches. Grape hyacinths, things like that. Mm -hmm. Those are gonna be closer to the surface. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. just keep, just keep yeah. a, aware that you don't need to go down in that area. You don't need to dig mm -hmm. your annuals in the foot. Right. So you're just going to go to where the surface of the bulbs mm -hmm. are. Right. Now, don't forget, this is a great time to do this, right, Len? This oh, is, this is it. This is it Pleasure right here. bulbs. We're in it's November. It's a perfect time. Right. It, I like it to be a little cooler. A little cooler. Um, rather than putting them in when it's too warm. Right. Soil temperatures are, are starting to come down. It's perfect bit. for root growth. Mm -hmm. Now's when you need to do it. Yes. Perfect, perfect weather for this. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, have you ever wondered about your leaves and how come certain leaves are yellow and certain leaves are red? Oh, boy. Stay tuned, and we'll discuss that in our next segment. Last year's windy, cold winter months were tough on your outdoor plants. Did you know that you can help your plants survive the ravages of winter? Bonides Wilt Stop is the answer. This all-natural product, once applied onto your trees and shrubs, will put a clear coating on the plant, which protects plants from drying out. It prevents winter burn, salt damage, moisture loss, and also reduces transplant shock. Wiltstop seals the moisture in and keeps the cold, dry, damaging wind out. Wiltstop also prevents Christmas trees and wreaths from dropping their needles by sealing in the moisture. Extend the life of your Christmas greens by applying Wiltstop before you bring them inside or hang them outside. 
Bonide's Wolf Stop is available in a bonus size 40 ounce ready to use and in pint, quart, and gallon concentrated sizes. Wolf Stop Christmas Tree and Wreath is available in a pint ready to use for easy application to your live seasonal decorations. Bonide products are family made in America. Wolf Stop is available at these fine stores. Neighbors Home and Garden, Hellertown, PA, Primex Garden Center, Glenside, PA, Bloomers Home and Garden Center, Sewell, Washington Township, New Jersey. Well, the leaves are starting to fall, Julio. Yes, they are. You see them? They're looking beautiful. Oh, they're wonderful. Just today, I I woke up, Landon. Wow. (laughs) It's amazing how things have changed, haven't they? Yes, they have. So, question is, is like, what makes a leaf change color? Yes. That is a good question. (laughs) Do you know the answer? (laughs) (laughs) Well... (laughs) Well, there's a little process here that we have to kind of uh, look at. And uh, one of the things we have to look at is how does that work uh, during this time of year? Right. And well, leaves, they, they have chlorophyll. chlorophyll. They're green, unless it's a variety that has like red leaves, like a Japanese maple. Mm-hmm. But even those change color too. Like mm-hmm. red Japanese maple or some of the varieties of red buds that have red leaves. They mm-hmm. do change a color. Some of them not too pretty. Japanese maple is gorgeous. Though. Oh, goodness. So, so explain to me the process. So if I'm holding everyone on YouTube, take a look. We're holding leaves in our hands in the studio. So uh, you can go on to our YouTube channel, Bloomers in the Garden, and take a look. And that uh, it's a process, Willie, where that chlorophyll that fills that leaf and is producing mm-hmm. food all spring, summer, fall, it gets to a point where the sunlight changes mm-hmm. and it, right. it triggers something in the plant. That's right. That, and they're, these are uh, pigments, aren't they? They're, um, they're, they're the color of the, of the uh, leaf itself. Yeah. And they're substances that are producing the leaf cells themselves. Right. And, and it happens all, you know, when a leaf drops off a tree, mm-hmm. It does. It's not like that happens automatically. That's a process that starts way back. It starts wow. way back when the sunlight starts to change, and what happens is that the chlorophyll, basically, it goes back into the tree, gets absorbed back into the tree, and it reveals the pigments that are in the leaf color when the chlorophyll is gone. And pretty much in the spring and summer, it's all green. Correct. Most most trees, most yeah. Them, yes. But like like I'm holding a yellow leaf in my hand right now, so yellows and oranges, oranges. are carotenoids, which are carrot, like an orange carrot. Oranges are yes. th- are those shades of color. Anthocyanins is another color, which is the red color, and you can see that in cranberries, red apples, cherries, strawberries, and things like that. Right, and all the time. And that what happens is that pigment is revealed, like we were talking about blueberries and how blueberries right. are an intense red. Oh, yes. Um, again, on our YouTube channel, you can see some of these. Um, we have some of the Nandina, which is a, a bamboo, and incredible bright, red. Bright red. Bright. Incredible red. Oh, yes. So, okay. But again, it's those pigments that are revealing themselves, and they're affected by the weather. Depending so on, on what it's like. What it's like right now, right? Yeah. For instance, early frost will weaken the brilliant red color. Now, this year, mm-hmm. we haven't had that. We haven't had yeah. an early frost. So the reds are going to be really intense. That's what, they, that's what I've seen so far, a lot of reds. Yep. Yep. Um, low temperatures above freezing, that's mm-hmm. what we've had, mm-hmm. right? Right. We and that had. helps the red color. Mm-hmm. You know, and we've had some rain, yep. right? Yep. That helps that too. That's right. That's right. Now, it's often thought that only leaved trees lose their leaves, but this happens mm-hmm. also in evergreens, evergreens where needles yes. drop. Like drop I'm sure anybody who has white pines or has mm-hmm. got quite a few needles on the ground <laughs> right true. about now. A little shedding here. Yep. Mm-hmm. And what happens? Certain evergreens, they'll shed mm-hmm. their needles every year, every two years, every three right. years. It all depends on the variety of plant. Right. But they also shed. Right. They're not dying. That's right. That's right. Don't, that, that's a good point. Don't mm-hmm. get worried that your mm-hmm. evergreens are dying if the inside needles are shedding out. That's good. Arborvitaes do it. 
um, I get hemlock, spruces, spruces. They, they all do yes. it. And it's just at this time of the year, mm-hmm. there is no food production being done because of lack of sunlight. They're basically going yes. dormant, getting ready to withstand the winter season. That's right. So don't panic out there, okay? Yeah. <laughs> we, don't want you, we don't want you running and <laughs> getting all, all excited about that one. That's right. That's right. So the amazing part to me is, is that I have seen, you know, everyone has, has seen a, a leaf just coming down, come down and fall mm-hmm. to the ground yeah. and a nice slow... Yeah, the people one. who are raking the leaves aren't real happy about it, but <laughs> it's all about that starts where the leaf attaches to the tree. Right. Everything starts there. And that, that that happened not at that moment that you're watching. That's the mm-hmm. end. Wow. The beginning happened probably a month, maybe two months earlier. Wow. Because there are some plants that will start changing their colors as early as August. That's pretty... Uh, Amazing yeah. how it works. Think about this. Now, Japanese maples, okay. they start getting a little more green than red, like a, a blood good Japanese maple. Sometimes yes. they're a little greenish during the summer months. Like that. And that when they change color, they begin sometime in, in August. August. Wow. Mm-hmm. How about mm-hmm. that? It's amazing how it works. Yep. Dogwoods. Dogwoods, yes. Yep. Oh, yeah. Mine's purple almost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> We were we were looking at um, hydrangeas. Hydrangeas, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh boy, the the hydrangeas. I, those oak leaf hydrangeas, yes, are almost as beautiful in the fall with their wow. leaf color. My goodness, that intense, shiny, They're gorgeous, deep red. Uh, it's beautiful. Yes, it it's is. beautiful because it's consistent. There are some hydrangeas that get like spotted leaves, and it's right. really not that pretty. It's it's kind of mottled. But this is intense. This is really intense. Oak leaf and oak leaf hydrangeas are fantastic. Yes, they are. Okay, fantastic. Right. Yep. Um, in my yard, mm-hmm. I do not rake my leaves. Oh, you don't? No. How come? I have a bald cypress. Okay. Which pretty much they just dissipate. Right. Um, ginkgo, right. which they just do the same thing. Same thing. So. Okay. If you're out shopping for a new tree, consider those two varieties if yes. you don't like raking leaves. <laughs> um, the other part of my yard, I just run the lawnmower over and wow. either I'm um, adding to the thatch layer or, there you go. or I'm, I call it composting. Yes, good job. Glenn. Yes, other people call it lazy. <laughs> lazy. <laughs> oh my God. Let's call it a little bit of both. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, you brought some leaves from your house because there's even some shrubs that are turning leaf color. Yes. Uh, Cotoneaster. Cotoneasters. Oh, they're beautiful, aren't they? Uh, they got a little bit of everything a touch, in that one. Yeah, there really is. We've got green, green and there's and a little yellow. touch of red yes. and yellow, mm-hmm. and it will eventually get to be m- almost more yellow. So the, it goes from a turn. Your azaleas. Like for instance, white azaleas, right. their leaf color is going to be what color? And, and again, azaleas are evergreen, right? But they do drop some of those inside leaves, so those inside leaves are going to turn yellow. So it'll be a bright yellow, bright yellow, hino crimson, hino crimson. Uh, some of the Hershey reds. Those are going to be a red, reddish color. Beautiful. Yeah, and yes. and even some of the pinks will be that color as well. So uh, that's you're getting double uh, shot of color here that's in right spring and in the fall oh, that's right boy, that's great Don't so get them when you walk out your door take a look up yes appreciate what's going on in the trees it's not just something that uh is meant to make you work and pick them up <laughs> it's something that happens in nature yes, that does. keeps that tree living yes <laughs> we'll what be a, right back time. after this message how we doing High Yield Brand Bone Meal contains 10% slow-release natural phosphorus. It helps all plants to develop sturdy root systems and stimulate healthy growth. You'll use it every time you plant bulbs, but it also is an excellent supplement fertilizer for roses, flowers, and vegetable gardens. High Yield Bone Meal is sourced from steamed bone meal, which provides a clean, natural source of phosphorus. High Yield is brought to you by VPG, the Fertilome People, and is available at these great stores. Russell Garden Center, 600 New Road, Churchville, PA. Bloomers in the Garden is an hour-long gardening radio program that airs to over 6 million residents throughout the Delaware Valley. From Allentown to Wilmington, from the Main Line to the Jersey Shore, Bloomers in the Garden can be heard twice each Saturday morning, first at 8 a.m. 
on 860 WWDB and again at 9 on 610 AM ESPN Radio. Each episode of Bloomers in the Garden will be broadcast on Bloomers' Facebook page and available as a podcast on bloomersinthegarden.com. Bloomers in the Garden is adding sponsors. Share your message to our large, diverse group of listeners. Commercials and segment sponsorships are available at incredibly affordable prices. Let Bloomers in the Garden get your message out to one of the largest and most diverse populations in the country. If you're interested in joining us in the garden, please visit bloomersinthegarden.com or email len at bloomers.com. Len, we're going to give some tips out there to folks who uh, have perennials and they're ready to go to bed. Yes. That's it. Perennials are getting sleepy. Yes, they are. There's some things that may be still blooming, like anemones, and right. um, there's some varieties of perennial, not mums per se, but they're in the chrysanthemum family. They're right. they're blooming. Montauk daisies, Montauk daisies. things like. Yes. And that's a few. But it's time. It's um, time. Yes, it is. We've had a, a couple of light frosts uh, in on so our side of the river. Mm-hmm. And that uh, it's only going to get colder before too long. We're only a short time away from Thanksgiving. That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. You having turkey for Thanksgiving? I'm sure you are. Oh yes, I am. Are you cooking? <laughs> no, you're, no, I'm not. You're going to family. Yes, like I am. <laughs> Either am I. Either am I. I'm Looking thankful for that. Mm-hmm. But with it coming to that time, it's re- it's time to really finish up in the perennial garden. It is. It um, is. Yep. One thing that you should be doing is. Go and mark where your perennials were. There are some perennials that are underground that you don't even see anymore. Yeah. Like, for instance, columbine. Right. Columbine, it, when it gets hot, it disappears. Completely. But, it, but it's one of the first ones to come up. And that right. really you should start marking those locations so you have a map of where those plants are. That's Bleeding a great hearts. Idea. Bleeding you hearts. Have. Yeah. Yep. So make sure you do that with the perennials that are there mm-hmm. now. How many times has a landscaper or <laughs> loving right. spouse uh-huh. weeded their garden oh only goodness. to find out that they were pulling out all of your, say, black-eyed Susans or, right. or all of the Oh, my goodness. Dianthus. That's a weed, right? Oh, my uh, gosh. Yeah. Oh, I sprayed uh, all yes. those. That's all <laughs> dianthus. Don't do that. Oh, my goodness. Yes. So, so it's good to know what we have in our, in our uh, garden sp- beds. So you, like you're saying, Len, make a map of this so yep. you know what's going on. And then you don't have to worry about, oh, my goodness, you know, this is area right here has to be cleaned or pulled out. And then, that's exactly. then you pull out half your uh, perennials. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. You know, one of the things, a, the best perennial gardens, and that's why perennials are so popular, is mm-hmm. that it's planted through an entire year. Yes. It's not like a landscape where you plant it all and you're done. Right. Because right. some of the plants you just can't get. Yeah. Like, there's varieties of, of columbine that you can't get now. You can't get poppies now. You can't right. get so many plants yeah. you, you can't do. Um, but, you know, it's something that you can seed right. some of those plants yes, now. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Mm-hmm. We've got we have some seeds here, don't yes, we? Yes, we do. And, yes. again, plugging the, our YouTube channel. Yes. Uh, again, it's column. I, I have just that, columbine, columbine, for instance. All of these seeds, black-eyed Susan, they naturally will seed this time of the year. So, so you can put them flower. in right now, mm-hmm. correct? That's and right. Uh, That's right. Put the them winter in the time's ground. not going to hurt them at all? No, it helps perfect. break down that seed code, mm-hmm. and, and it will help them to come in. Right. And, th- and that's, uh, again, keep make sure that that map contains where those seeds are going. Right. right. And that uh, just uh, there's... Really good instructions on, like, you know, we have a dozen other different varieties of perennial seeds that you can pick up and, and uh, plant. But you have to make sure you remember where they go because they, as seedlings, they look a lot different than they do as mature plants. Mm-hmm. One thing, too, Len, is uh, all those dead leaves, we have to remove them. Yes. And uh, and make sure that they're not lingering for now, diseases. We're not talking about, like, leaves from the trees. We're talking about the perennial leaves themselves, right? That's correct. The perennial leaves themselves of the, of the plants that we're going to cut back. Mm-hmm. So when you are cutting them back, you need to make sure that those leaves are out completely. Sh- should I leave my black-eyed Susans, leave the deadhead, let the birds just eat them? Yes, you could do that. That's they're still uh, So anything with a seed head, seed leave head on. Is, yes. Echinacea, if you have those two, and they're still, the seed heads are there, go right ahead and leave them on. Okay. Mm-hmm. Leave them for the birds. Yes. Mm-hmm. But everything at, everything else, trim back. Yes, trim back. We'd say about six inches. Right. So that's a good, uh, good number to rem- remember. 
Yeah, and, and, uh, and the reason why you pick up those leaves are because there's different diseases that can overwinter mm -hmm. and right. just reinfect that plant when yeah. it comes back. Yes, that's that's what happens uh, if you leave that on there. Yeah, it it's that's why you clean your garden. It's not uh, only cosmetic, but it certainly right. helps. Right, and don't forget else. to fertilize. We always say fertilize at the end. Right, but and not at this point or organic. Organic, you want to yes. go organic. Nothing right. that's hot. They say, like for instance, a chemical fertilizer is hot. Means quick release. Quick it release. means that it's all yeah. chemical. We don't really recommend that. No. for the most part, at all. No, we don't. We uh, don't. A little bit of that in there mm -hmm. is good. The inorganic, yes, depending on the time. But right now, if you use organic, it mm -hmm. it will stay in the soil and work in the soil. Yes. Mm -hmm. Plant tone. Plant tone. Yes, we plant use tone. that all the time. Plant tone has. Uh, Biotone, biotone in it. Yeah, microorganisms. Ex yeah, explain biotone. There are microorganisms that uh, are beneficial for the soil, and they work their ways their way into the soil and exp you know expand out. So you'll have that uh, being used f uh, by the roots of the plants. Mycorrhiza. Mycorrhiza. Yes. Mycorrhiza. And There's they, different they, strains. Yes. Mycorrhiza is uh, is um, those microorganisms that we're talking about, and uh, they'll they'll be absorbed by the root systems and they'll ha ha their root systems will grow into like little hairs. Yeah, it's what it, it connects. It's the symbiotic relationship between right. the plant and it's what decomposes the elements in the soil mm -hmm. so the nutrients can be absorbed through the plant root. Mm -hmm. And they right. attach themselves onto that. And that there's uh, some grass seed you may s see that says endophyte on it and what it does is when that germinates it it has that endophyte on the seed wow. where it automatically goes into the root of the newly sprouted grass seed works the wow. same way it's same the same way. type of thing wow. it's relatively it's old science new technology how about that a little yep. bit of both yep. isn't that wonderful yeah <laughs> How we, uh, We're living it's in a wonderful progress. age. <laughs> yeah. It's called progress, too. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> well, you know, dividing, it's getting a little late to yes, divide your perennials. Mm -hmm. I think you still can. Yeah, it's still but a little warm, so you can yeah, get away with it, huh? it, it. Just keep in mind that, that maybe you're you're getting to the very end. Yes. You're the so very end. Very so, end so, again, it, it's it's. If you're going to split them, you better get them into the ground. The roots are still going to grow. Right. But as far as top growth, if your top growth is Pretty coming to an end on most perennials. Mm -hmm. There are some of those uh, cool season varieties, like right. uh, like some of the sedums that they'll still sedums, keep growing yes. for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, live forever. Live yes. forever. Autumn Joy Sedum. Autumn Joy Sedum, yes. I saw it the other day. <laughs> yeah. And, it, and again, Talk about, uh, we're talking about fall color. Fall color, yes. You get Beautiful. a double package on those guys, yes, right? They do. Come out, sometimes yes. a little yellowish, then all of a sudden they see them. There, you get mm -hmm. a double whammy on those. Double whammy, yes. <laughs> yep. If you like that. Um, you told me, and I know What's you up? haven't been into your perennial garden yet to clean up. No, I oh, know, I haven't. I haven't either. <laughs> no. I mean, it's today, it's in the yeah. 60s. It's a beautiful day. I know. Yep. It's been telling us to, to get out there, right? Yeah, that's it, it, so everybody get out there, get out there this weekend, work. work in that garden, yes. enjoy yourself. Yes, it's, it's, it's good work. It's good work. That's, that's right, and you will benefit. <laughs> benefit in the spring. That's exactly uh -huh. right. There you that's go. That's exactly right. All right, we'll be right back Thank after you. these messages. Are you tired of the mice moving into your home with you every fall? Would you like to keep them from coming into your home? Do you dislike using mouse killers around your kids and pets? Bonite has the answer, mouse magic. Mouse magic is an all natural mouse repellent that keeps mice from coming into your home, summer cabins, cars, boats, RVs, farm equipment, garden sheds, and more. Mouse magic has a pleasant aroma which smells like spearmint and peppermint, but mice hate it. Mouse Magic repels by smell and works with an irritant that drives mice away. Just use one throw pack per average size room and your mouse free for up to two months. Available in a four pack box or a 12 pack economy Ziploc bag. Bonite products are family made in America. 
Mouse Magic can be found at these fine stores. Bucks Country Gardens, Doylestown, PA, Magnolia Garden Village, Magnolia, New Jersey, Rosedale Mills, Pennington, New Jersey. Boy, oh, my roses have never looked better than they do right now. Good news. Uh, I have one that is actually, it, it's in front of a little oh. section of fence that I have that hides my garbage cans. <laughs> and it is an orange variety of rose. Mm, orange. It is, it's a, it's a, um, Floribunda. Yes. Gorgeous. It smells good, huh? It, it does have a great fragrance. Oh, nice. But it's not a big flower. Okay. Like a hybrid tea where you sure. just appreciate each individual flower. Right. But it's a great orange color, and uh, there is no disease on it. That's but wonderful. Where it looked pretty bad, right. going uh, probably from oh. spring into summer. You're kidding me. Yeah, it got uh, hit by some insect that was eating off of it, and I sprayed it. They took care of that. Look at that. Good job. And then it just looked weak. Uh huh. It has grown more in the last probably six weeks than it did the entire year. Oh, that's amazing. It is. It is. And now, here it is in November. It is. You're saying it, how wonderful it looks. Yep. Yep. So Sometimes. Your roses are going to look good in November. That's about right. That. Hey, West Jersey Rose Society. Right. Get in touch with the West Jersey Rose Society. They uh -huh. are great people. And that uh, look them up online. Great information. And mm -hmm. just they're just a great organization. Uh, there was a friend of ours, John Johnston, who was part of the West Jersey Rose Society right. long ago. Right. Um, and that uh, he was my guru for oh roses. Boy. That's and that uh, every time I see that rose looking as good as it does, I think about John. There you go, John. Isn't it <laughs> funny how plants do that? They bring memories. Bring memories, yes. There's a connection there. It's Sight wonderful. Sight and smell. Yes. The only thing is they don't make noise. That's right. Except they blow the wind. <laughs> anyway, roses, <laughs> this time of the year. Yes. What do I do with them? Oh they look God. so good. I know. It's don't amazing. cut them back. Yet. Don't cut them back. Don't cut them back. Nope. First of all, let them all form rose hips right right rose don't hips. eat don't eat don't, them don't cut the roses no right? you can if you want to bring some into the house nobody's okay. going to say anything other yeah. than how pretty they look but yes. it's you don't <laughs> want to cut them back you want to kind of let right. them go through their dormancy by creating those rose hips that are on the top mm -hmm. and then just let them go dormant right um and then you're going to spray them with a dormant oil spray and that that's going to be in our next segment we'll talk right. about that um but you have to decide what kind of rose do i have Right. So, for instance, if I've got a, a shrub, shrub rose, rose. Right. Like a knockout. Yeah. Right? It's treated like a shrub. You know, yeah. it's not. You can cut it back. Yep. Yeah, it's on its own root. It's not mm -hmm. something where you don't have to do anything with it. Right. You can let it go. You can shape it up. Shape it you up can, you do you whatever want. you want. Yeah. That's an easy thing. Yeah. Just, just treat it like a landscape yep. plant. Right. Low, low maintenance. Low maintenance. Yes. Now, if you have a hybrid tea or floribunda, now it that's more than likely. That's a different story. That right. Say that again? That's a different story. It, it is. Yes. It's grafted. Grafted. How, right. do, how do you know? Mm -hmm. Look at the root. The root. And you're trying to look for the thing. It looks like a knot. It looks, looks like, like a, a little bump, right? A little, like yeah. A little bump. Between the root and the plant. Right. If it has that, guess You've what? It's grafted. Grafted, right. And you want to make sure that that graft overwinters. Mm -hmm. um, some of our listening are they're in cold zones like zone five. You may want to mulch that zone, that graft, um, and that mm -hmm. that spot just to make sure that a um, cold weather doesn't kill it over the winter. Like we had zero in southern New Jersey last year. I have wow. never. I've lived in southern New Jersey for over thirty years, and I have never, ever right. had it go zero. That before. is cold. That it's is the first low. time. Pretty really low. low. Mm -hmm. really, really low. low. So, so you're, you're covering up the the um, the graft. Yep. That's it. Protecting that Protecting graft. It, right. Protecting that graft, you, you want to make it. sure mm -hmm. that you're anything that is going to be blowing in the wind. Right. Um, you know, you may want to any crossing branches where they'll be rubbing or anything right. like that. You want to trim up, but for the most part, you want to just let it go dormant mm -hmm. to the point where it's creating those rose hips. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now that's floribunda, floribunda, or yeah. or a uh, hybrid tea. Right? Yeah, or grandiflora or hybrid tea. Grandiflora. It's a gra yeah. basically your grafted rose. Right. Now, are you putting a little bit of dirt on top of the? Uh, no. No, okay. gonna mulch it. Just mulch it. Yeah. Okay. You, I can use compost. Compost a little like bit. That. Yeah. So the the leaves don't blow away. Kind of. Yeah. Thing. Well, but you just yeah, it needs to stay there to insulate it. Yes. You could use peat moss, I guess, mm -hmm. but again, that's gonna absorb water. I don't yeah, know. It gets a little wet. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I I would stick with a, a good shredded mulch. Okay, that would do best. Right, you're gonna cover it by about you know anywhere from four to six inches. Okay, on over the graft, and mm-hmm. in the spring, you're gonna take it take away a little bit. Right, you don't want that on there. No, no, no. Now the challenging for you guys that have uh, climbers, climbers out there. Oh boy. <laughs> now, the canes, they can get big. Mm-hmm. Climbers can get oh, fifteen yeah. foot tall or more. There's that, uh, have you ever seen the movie Steve Martin, Father of the Bride? No, I haven't. I, I like the movie just because of the roses that they have in front of their house. <laughs> right. All right, I'm a plant geek, okay? <laughs> That's right. Just go find it on demand, look <laughs> at the house. It is incredible. Uh, I want that on my house. There you go. <laughs> and what they do is, is on the front of the house, on the front porch, right. two roses are climbing over the top. Now, those roses in this area have to be protected. That's right. So right. what happens is that those things, you know, we've all been through those winter storms where the wind is nuts and it's right. just blowing everything. Your garbage can mm-hmm. ends up oh, in yes. the next county. Yes. Mm-hmm. Those so, canes. So these, these canes can be pulled away, right? Well, they've got to be protected and secured. Right. So you've got to gather them up. Right. Um, you're going to, you're going to tie them and stake them so that they're not whipping around in the, the wind. wind. Yes. Now one trick, don't use wire. Okay. Don't use thin, don't use a thin uh, type of rope or anything. That would break them, right? Yeah, you'll yes. girdle it. Mm-hmm. You'll girdle right. it and that basically will it, it's not it's good. Not good. Yeah. Use uh, a pair of your wife's old stockings. Oh, boy, Len, I'll tell you what. (laughs) (laughs) You better better ask your wife about that. That's true. (laughs) (laughs) Ask first. And you better not just go out and buy a pair because then she may have other questions. (laughs) That's right. But uh, anyway, use a pair of stockings Mm -hmm. because it's soft. Great idea. It pulls tight. Right. right? And you can get a good tie on it. And you're going to gather those canes together. And you're going to keep them so that they're... Uh, tied every say foot or so, and it depends on how you have the plant attached to whatever it's climbing on. Oh, okay. And you're going to protect it that way, right? Um, again, gather them in a bunch, stake them together, and, and then cut. You can cut out all the uh, dead. Well, if you have dead, yeah. Again, you're, it because it's a climber, it's going right. to be a little different. Okay. But again, mulch it because climbers it. are are grafted. Protect it a little bit too. And if you're wondering why do they graft things, why do they graft, they graft things because the ornamental portion of the plant is desirable, but the root portion may not be as aggressive in supplying nutrients uh, to that top okay. portion. So, the bottom of the plant mm-hmm. is the thing that's in the soil, sending the food up, up to the rest of the plant, mm-hmm. and that that is what's used to, used to you know, it's basically, it's, it, it is, gr- is glued on glued or on grafted to, yeah. to another, another plant so that, you know, that super duper root system right. is now feeding that super duper top plant. Right. Where if it was on its own root, it couldn't do it. But right. yet there are other varieties that okay. do. Like for instance, we're, we're talking about knockout roses knockout and roses. some of the other drift roses, things like that. Right. How about that? Hmm. Uh, Go ahead and spray them with a dormant oil spray. Dormant and oil. again, that's our next segment. Mm-hmm. Uh, dormant oil spray will go and smother insects and will keep anything that is overwintering on that plant and give you a fresh start. But fresh that's start. in that next segment. So that's make right. sure you're listening. Um, and that's it. That's it. Mulch it. Mulch it. Water it. Water it. And this one goes with your perennials too. Water it real well. Right. All right. So that, that you uh, so you end up with a really good... Mm-hmm. Um, healthy soil and those roots are still growing. Remember, the roots are still growing even if the temperatures above ground are 30. Mm, those temperatures sure. underground are warm enough warm for up. the roots to be growing. Yes, we're preparing them for next spring. That's right. right. That's right. Mm-hmm. So Good stay work. tuned. We're going to talk about dormant oil in our next segment. Good work. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Cole, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. 
Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower, peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomers in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomers Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. Just uh, talked about Rose's Land, and we talked a little bit about Dormant Spray. So now we're going to get into a little bit of that Dormant Spray that we've been talking about. That's right. So you right. kind of know a little bit more about that. Yep, that uh, Dormant Oil Spray, okay, it is an organic Right? right, and it's a paraffin oil that it will basically it smothers the insect. It doesn't poison it per mm. se, but it smothers the insect and makes it to so that um, it cleans up everything for next year. Wow, that's great. So when you say smother, it, mm-hmm. they can't breathe anymore. They're, Correct. That's that's the uh, main uh, concern here that we're looking at. That's right, and and that. That way, it also takes care of some eggs and eggs. some other things. Overwintering eggs, that it could be a problem if you don't... Uh, well, it, just like how you we were saying before about picking up the leaves. Right. You know, if, sure. you, if you're picking up your leaves, you're, you could... And if you don't pick up your leaves, rather, right. you could be having that same disease same problem disease. that you had the year before. So we need to stop it. Right. So right. Same, mm-hmm. same thing. Right. So same thing where same where you could have that insect right. where all of a sudden now you've got um, you know you're gonna have everything from mealy bugs, uh, um, aphids, aphids, yes, aphids, uh-huh. and they're all they're all d- over. All, <laughs> yep. You don't know where they're coming from, and they're so tiny too. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they're invading. <laughs> they're very invasive. And and again, the one of the things that we're having problems with we okay. on our very first show that we talked about right. um the lantern fly oh the lantern fly yes yeah. i mean right now i'd like everybody to go out and take a look uh and see if they're you're finding egg masses mm-hmm. if you just google spotted lantern fly you will find that they're egg masses and that it is a crisis it right is. now it is um, you you have to be vil- vigilant, right, Len? That's right. Uh, so not only the aphids or the mealy bugs, you know, we're talking about something like this going on with the uh, Chinese spotted lantern fly. That's right. That's a uh, that's pretty huge. Yep. Yep. So be vigilant. That's right. That's right. Now, so I can spray it with a hand sprayer. Right. 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 And and can I do this to like say we didn't. You know, even those perennials that we cut back, can I put it on those? Oh, yes. Yes, you can put that on shrubs. Okay. Okay. And you can put it on, even in your house plants, you can do that too. Now, there you go. Yeah. I haven't brought in my house plants yet. <laughs> no, you, <laughs> well, see, it sounds yeah. like I haven't done anything. No, you haven't. <laughs> Listen, thank God it, it's only been, uh, you know, 67 Yeah, that's lately. right. <laughs> so you're okay. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Oh, well, man. you go in, if you haven't brought in your house plants yet, Leave them outside a little bit longer. Yes. And get bonides again, all, all season. Seasons, uh, all season horticultural and do- dormant oil spray. You can use it mm-hmm. if the, um, you don't want to use it if the temperatures are approaching 80. Yeah. yeah you want to, you want to kind of tune it down for that. And then how low can you go? Um, 40, about 40 degrees. 40 degrees, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You don't want to go, you wanna go too low or too high. Right. 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 So, and, and again, it's organic. It's organic. Yes. It's organic. It is mm-hmm. organic. Mm-hmm. And that you want to spray your house plants. Right. The whole top of the leaves. Right. Right. And underneath, and they can't see you. <laughs> Julio's see making you. that hand gesture, like yes. under your chin. Like <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right. it's uh, under the leaves. Right. That's right. Uh, under we the always leaves. forget that, don't we? <laughs> yes, because if you get on the top, that most insects are hiding under the leaf anyway. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're uh, we forget that. Right. So many people that come in, I have these fuzzy things, I yeah, put, yeah, and it's yeah. and it's mealybugs or it's scale, right. especially on scale. On scale. Scales look like part of the plant, like on the trunk, that <laughs> where it looks yeah. like just a bump Little on a thing. stem yes. or something. Mm-hmm. That that scale, okay. this works fantastic oh, okay. on scale. Yes. You know what's funny about scale? No. What? When they're when they're immature, 
they have legs and they can crawl around. Oh, wow. But as when they become adults, okay. they're, they're like a barnacle. Oh. They lose their legs and just suck her on, oh, and they just geez. basically are, you know, sucking, sucking out of the, that, uh, all the juices out of that wow. plant. And you're wondering, how come it's not doing good? And it's because it's filled with scale. Wow. Now, it's nasty. You know what Euonymus is? Golden Euonymus, and yes. right? Yeah. Silver yes. King Euonymus. Euonymus. Euonymus scale. Oh, okay. How bad are they? Bad. Bad That'll scale. Be, this it it'll kill it. Let everyone who buys a golden or silver euonymus or a boxwood euonymus yeah. buy yourself a bottle of the all season spray and use it right. because you will get euonymus you, scale. So you need this. You absolutely need. Always this. be on your uh, in your home and in, yeah, in yeah. Your, yeah, in your garden yep. shed. Didn't or whatever. we do this one time? Don't leave home without it. That's like right. A, this had American that Express <laughs> yeah. card. The, right. the all seasons oil is mm -hmm. something that you want to make sure that you you use. It's my first go to. Oh yes. Because it has a broad label. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if there's any plants that I can't use it on, but right. uh, I don't want to say you that. You know, this is something checking. I need to buy because yeah. it, I should always have this. Yes. Yep. It's like a, a staple. It's almost like a staple. Yep. Right. Yep, it's like say you know salt and pepper, so right. you need this. All it's the time. not. It doesn't poison them. No. It works differently. It's like what's it like? Is it like a? It, it puts a smooth uh, coat over them. Okay. And then it it kills the insect that way. It smothers it. Right. So it's like, I don't want to get too graphic, but it, you know, <laughs> right. it, it basically is. Uh, it's going to smother them that way, okay. and rather than making your plant poisonous to anything that comes right. and eats it. Now, it's also a dormant oil, correct, Len? Yeah, well, that's it. Because on when you're growing fruit trees and things, okay. anybody who's grown fruit trees knows a lot about doing dormant sprays. That's for sure. Wow. That's for sure. But have you have you used this before? You've used it at the garden center, I know. Yeah, we, at the garden center, I'm not in my home, though. Yeah. I need to use it at my home. <laughs> you, you absolutely <laughs> do. Yes. You absolutely do. Um, roses. and. Every, almost everything, every plant. Everything, yeah, yeah, Without, I don't really want to say vegetables a to right away because uh, yeah. I want to. I want to read the label a little bit mm -hmm. more. But absolutely, fruit trees, fruit trees, and this time yeah. of the year, spray all of them. Those you want them a scale. Mm -hmm. They look like there's snow covering wow. the branches, yeah. and that it people can't tell because it's not that typical thing where it's eating the leaf. Mm -hmm. It's just sucking the life out of the plant. Slowly, it's a slow. Slowly, thing. yes. Yep. So it'll clean up all of that for next year. Wow. And guess what? You do this, you won't have insects on your plants. You won't have a battle mm -hmm. that's carried over from that's 2018 right. that you have to battle again in that's 2019. Right. This is one less thing you have to worry about. That's when, right. When you use this product. Yeah. Yeah. It's wonderful. It, and again, it's dormant oil spray. Oil. It is paraffin oil. It, it is a, again, all organic. Okay. You want to spray it when the temperature's about. 80 degrees mm -hmm. or lower. Okay. So you're not going to do this necessarily in the summer. Summer, no. Right, but now is Spring the time. Spring and fall sounds like the best time. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. And some of the insects that are so hard to get rid of on house oh, plants, yes. like white fly. Yes. Gone. 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 So mm -hmm. use it inside. What I would do is put it into the sink, make sure that you're, you're watching your house plants. But absolutely, right. before you bring any plants into the house, that you're do spraying this. it down with do this. this, yes. Yep. Like you said, Len, don't leave home without it. This is a great product. You said I love it. it. <laughs> love you it. said it. All right. We'll <laughs> be right back after this message. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. See me in Julio down by the schoolyard. Okay. This is our next. That's see it. All right. So, oh, boy, lots to learn today. <laughs> What was oh, brother. I, leaves on trees that are turning colors. Wow. You know, it's, it's, you're watching nature in action. Yes, it is. You're, you're, and a new word I learned, anthocyanins. Wow. Wow. That's, 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 you know, the red color again. 
I'm glad what, you had uh, to say that. The pigments of the actual uh, uh, stems here that are changing. It's amazing how that works. Well, yeah. you know, I, I can't, I still, dormant oil spray, dormant oil spray, dormant oil spray yeah, on wow. everything. That's right. Everything outdoors. Everything. Hit it with dormant oil spray for sure. Yeah, you can't go wrong. No. Mm -mm. No. Get you it ready. Know. Get it ready, folks. This is all good work here. That's okay? it. Yes. And and it's easy. The dormant it's oil easy. spray. Oh, it's easy. You can't over apply it either. Yeah. That's uh, you know that's a, that's how many times huh? I'm like, well, how much do I put down? Well, you have yeah. to put down four ounces per mm -hmm. gallon, that's and right. you can't spray more than right. if you're spraying your plant to the point where it drips off the leaf. Wow. And make sure you turn that sprayer upside down and get under those leaves, right? Because that's where they're hiding. That's right. That's yeah, where they're this hiding. is my kind of uh, product right yep. here. I love it. Yeah, and it gets yep. you off to fresh start. Fresh start. Yes. It's like, I'll be. Insect You'll be so free. happy in spring. You're gonna call us up. Yeah, that's right. It's like, <laughs> wow, that stuff really worked. That's right. And it does. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. And it, I can't say enough about the whole euonymus scale. Oh yes. If if you go out and buy euonymus, they're a great plant, but Beautiful just plant. just. Buy the oil spray with it. Yes. Just consider it as a companion to it. It is. You should always have this product. <laughs> yes. You know, and, and roses, mm -hmm. there's no better way. I mean, we I don't think Very we hit on uh, fertilizing your roses. Yeah. Rose, rose tone, you could put in some rose, rose tone. tone. Yes. The roots are growing. Mm -hmm. Right. But getting them ready for winter. Getting it ready. Yes. Yeah. That's by, the main key. By, again, protecting, protecting that. Uh, that graft. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. And then the canes of the. Canes. Yep. Find back. Father of the Bride. Find that movie. Look yeah, at the roses that right. are on that house. That's You'll right. You'll say, oh, my gosh, I want roses next. I want right. climbing roses next year. And the bulbs. Remember the bulbs. Oh, brother. <laughs> yeah, oh. that's right. Plant your bulbs. Plant your bulbs. And don't worry. It's It really doesn't get too late to plant your bulbs. Yeah, it's still, just how well they're going to come back next year. Right. That's going to be the That's going to be Beautiful. it. The better you plant them now, the right. better they're going to be even the final, the year after that. That's correct, boy. We're all excited about that. Yep. I love bulbs. Yes. Great. Ooh. Lots of stories about bulbs. Oh, yes, there is. <laughs> yes, we, ha we hit a few of them, huh, Len? <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Bloomers in the yes. Garden. Join us here ne next week. Next week, anti-transference sprays. We're going to talk about uh, what else, Julio? Yes. Uh, we're going to talk about hydrangeas and what, and, uh, what to remind you about this uh, this uh, late fall season. This is your last shot. We're going to talk about fig yeah. trees. Uh, fig and trees, yeah. Wonderful. Fig trees. I don't get it. But those of you in South Philly, yes. I've seen it. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> All right, we'll see you in the garden. See you in the garden. Bloomers in the Garden is an hour-long gardening radio program that airs to over 6 million residents throughout the Delaware Valley. From Allentown to Wilmington, from the Main Line to the Jersey Shore, Bloomers in the Garden can be heard twice each Saturday morning, first at 8 a.m., on 860 WWDB, and again at 9 on 610 AM ESPN Radio. Each episode of Bloomers in the Garden will be broadcast on Bloomers' Facebook page and available as a podcast on bloomersinthegarden.com. Bloomers in the Garden is adding sponsors. Share your message to our large, diverse group of listeners. Commercials and segment sponsorships are available at incredibly affordable prices. Let Bloomers in the Garden get your message out to one of the largest and most diverse populations in the country. If you're interested in joining us in the garden, please visit bloomersinthegarden.com or email len at bloomers.com.